It's a great week to be here. We are in week three of our series entitled Encounter. And what we've been doing over the last several weeks is we've just been looking at stories throughout the Bible of individuals who encountered the real tangible presence of God, because this is what God has for you. God wants you to encounter him, to have an experience with him. And so we've been saying throughout this series, this this kind of premise, God is not just to be encountered, but but to be understood, but encountered. Like, Like God doesn't want us just to have a head knowledge of him. He wants us to encounter, to experience his presence, that that we can have this moment with God that radically changes our life forever. And so we don't want to just have a head knowledge knowledge, though knowing things about God is good. I want us to experience him. And I I hope that's what happens when you walk into this building on a Sunday morning, that you sense the presence of God because he is alive. He is active. He's not dead and still in a grave somewhere. He was risen from that. And so we get to experience the presence of God. And so if you haven't been here over the last several weeks in week one, we looked at the story of Jacob. And Jacob had this incredible encounter with God where he actually wrestled with God. And we said in that part that first week that sometimes we find ourselves wrestling with God, maybe wrestling with our past, maybe wrestling with our secrets, or or sometimes just wrestling with what God is asking us to do. Maybe he's calling you to something that seems so much greater than what you feel capable of doing. You're kind of wrestling with God in that moment. In week two, we looked at the story of Moses, and Moses is on the backside of the desert, and there's this burning bush, and he he sees it, and and he goes over to it, and God begins to speak to him, And, and what Moses struggled with was his identity. He was like, like, man, I don't really know who I am, and, and I'm, I'm struggling with these things. And, and, we, and honestly, we struggle with our identity too often. We, we're kind of trying to figure out who we are, who has Christ made us to be, what is Christ's thoughts towards us. And the very first thing that God wants to do when you encounter him is he wants to work on your identity. He wants to deal with some of the things on the inside of you. He wants to change your thinking and your thought process. And that's great to know that, that our identity doesn't have to be defined by this world. Our identity can be defined by our relationship with Jesus Christ. And so if you missed the first two weeks, here's the great thing about videos and media. You can follow along. And so I want to encourage you, if you miss a week, don't just be like, ah, I missed church on Sunday. You know, like I'll be there next week. Like listen to it throughout the week. Put it on your, when, when you're driving somewhere, when you're going to work, when you're coming home, listen and continue to engage the word of God. And so today I want to look at a third story. And today I want to look at a story of an individual by the name of Isaiah. And so Isaiah may be this individual, you're kind of like, who in the world is Isaiah? And so Isaiah, let me give you some context. Isaiah is an Old Testament prophet um, that lived between seven and 800 years um, before Christ. He's one of the most famous prophets of the Old Testament. And part of that is just because his book is the longest. So the book of Isaiah is 66 chapters. And throughout that book, Isaiah is is prophesying things. And and he's, he's telling us of things that are to come. And really, Isaiah... Isaiah is this prophet that shows us in great detail some of the prophecies about the life of Christ. And so um, he talks about the coming of Jesus. He talks about kind of the teachings of Jesus. He he prophesies about his birth. He prophesies about his death. And so Isaiah is this incredible prophet. And so if you've never read the book of Isaiah, I want to encourage you, open it up, read it, and begin to see how these Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled in the life of Christ. Christ. But here's one thing that we're told about Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. We're told that Isaiah saw and experienced the presence of God. Isaiah had an encounter with Jesus. And his encounter was such a big deal that the, the, the apostle John in the New Testament reiterates this fact that Isaiah saw God. Uh, John would say that Isaiah saw the glory of the Lord. And so the purpose, the purpose of a prophet was to see, help people see things. They would prophesy about things that had not yet happened. And so they, they would tell people things that they could not see on their own. And so I want us to understand today that when we have an encounter with God, when we experience the presence of God, I believe that that gives us the opportunity to see our spiritual journey clearer. That when we encounter the presence of God, he wants to help you see some things to see some things about yourself, to see some things about your life and and where you currently are. And so we could say it this way this morning. When you are trying to make sense of it all, when we're going through life and we're trying to make sense of all that life throws our way, the good, 
the bad, the pain, the difficulties. Like we're going through life and as we go through this life, there's sometimes just moments where like, this just doesn't make sense. I don't get why this is happening. I don't get why I'm having to walk through this season of life. I don't get why I have to go through this valley. I don't get why I have to experience this loss. I I just don't understand some of these things. So when you're trying to make sense of it all, we need to understand that an encounter with God changes everything. That encounter with God changes everything. That this is what God wants for you. That when we're trying to figure out life, which I don't know about you, I just don't have life figured out. Like just when I think I'm figuring it out, it throws me a curveball to me. When we're trying to make sense of it all, it's an encounter with God that is gonna absolutely change everything. And so in Isaiah's encounter with God, I think there's three things that we see clearly in those moments that Isaiah has an encounter with God that I believe we'll have when we have an encounter with the living God. And so I wanna give you three things that Isaiah experienced in his encounter with God that I believe you will. And at the end, I wanna give you some things to, to help us deal with maybe some pain and difficulty that we face in life. The first thing, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Our greatest pain can be a catalyst for our greatest gain. Our greatest pain can be a catalyst for our greatest gain. You need to understand that God speaks to us the most when we're hurting the most. That when you're going through the the most difficult season of your life, this is the season that God wants to speak to you the most. And this is so important to grasp. And it's so important to understand because too many people's reaction to pain is actually to run away from God and not to God. Like I've seen it too often. People go through a difficult season, a difficult moment, a difficult experience. And instead of running to God, they find themselves drifting away from God. They begin to assign blame to God. God, why did you allow this to happen? God, why did you allow me to go through this difficult season? God, why did this loss happen? Why did I have to go through this sickness? Why why did this relationship have to end? God, why are all these things going on? And, And our human nature is to begin to ask why. And we go through a painful experience and then we begin to blame God and we move ourselves away from God. But the pain we experience in life shouldn't push us away from God, but it should become the catalyst for our greatest gain. You see, those who overcome heartache and tragedy and difficult situations are the individuals that have learned that those moments are the best opportunity to experience God's presence. Those are the best moments and opportunities to experience the presence of God. Here's what we see in Isaiah chapter six, starting with verse one. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I I experienced the presence of God, but it was in the year that King Uzziah died. And these words, King Uzziah died, are very important words to this passage of scripture in the book of Isaiah. Because this would have been a low moment for the entire nation of Judah. Because for this nation, they had lost a great king. That the Bible tells us that Uzziah was a king that had honored God. He, he, he became king at age of 16. He followed after God's commands. And because of that, the nation prospered. The nation was stabilized. Things were going well. And though Uzziah started well, Uzziah's life actually had a very tragic ending. For Uzziah, at the very end of his life, he did something that went against the command of God. And because of that, he was struck with leprosy. And so he was kind of a cast off near the end of his life. And this great and wise king who started well, didn't necessarily finish as strong as he started. And so King Uzziah is dead and the nation is grieving. They've lost the best king that they've had so far in the nation of Judah. And they're like, what is going on with this? And in the midst of this, the people would have been wondering, God, where are you in the middle of this? God, why have you allowed this to happen? And so Isaiah is saying, in the darkest moment that I've experienced, in the loss of someone that, that was wise and was great and was a king to this nation, in that moment, Isaiah says, I saw the Lord. And can I just tell some of you today that on your worst days, in the middle of the most difficult seasons that you have experienced, you can encounter the presence of a living God. And God wants to be present in those 
moments. He would go on and say these words. He says, in the year that he died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And so the train of his robe, this was kind of very symbolic. So for kings during this age, the the, the more power, the more prestige that a king had, the bigger the train would have been on his robe. And the reason for that is that people would have had to move the train for him. And so it was the same thing as like a bride today, right? If you're you're getting married and you're the bride, you don't mess with the train that's on your dress. You have somebody do that for you. And so in the biblical days, the king would have a train on his robe and the larger the train on his robe, it kind of signified the greater majesty that he had, the more dignity he had, the more powerful he was as a king. And so Isaiah says, in my darkest, in my most overwhelming moments, I saw God in the train of his robe filled the temple because he was saying, this is how great, this is how powerful our God is. And then he goes on in verse three, and he would say, above him were seraphim. So these are angels. And so in this encounter with God, he sees the train of his robe filling the temple. Above him are angels and they're calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Every part of the earth is full of his glory. And here's what Isaiah would say. In my darkest moment, I saw the Lord, his train of the robe filled the temple and the whole earth is full of his glory. And Isaiah would say, in the middle of my problems, God's glory is present. That his glory is present when we're going through difficulties. That in the middle of your financial problems, the glory of the Lord is present. His glory is there on the day that you lost that loved one, that person that you cared about and that you're mourning the loss of. His glory was there on the day that you got a divorce and you're wondering, God, where are you in the middle of this dark moment? His glory was there on the day that you received a medical report that that doesn't really look good for your future or for a family member. His glory was present because the whole earth, every part of our world is filled with the glory of God. And what Isaiah is recognizing in this moment is how big and how powerful our God is. And he began to realize that in the middle of his problems, that God was bigger than any problem that he would face. And if you'll recognize it in your life, if you'll recognize the problems and the difficulty that you're going through, you'll begin to understand that difficulties and problems are a catalyst for our greatest gain. Look what he goes on and says in verse four. And he says, at the sound of their voices, the doorpost and threshold shook, which represents the foundations of our life. He says, my whole life was shaking and the temple was filled with smoke. And so you need to understand that the darkest moments in your life in the most difficult seasons that you're walking through, don't run from God, but run to God. We need to understand that when something is happening to me, God wants to reveal himself in me. When I'm going through something in my life, when I'm going through difficulties, that God wants to reveal himself in me in me. He wants to show up and have an encounter with you. And for some of you that have walked in this place today, you're going through a really difficult season. For some of you, there's heartache and and there's brokenness, there's grief, there's mourning. You've come through a rough season. You're going through difficulties. You're going through problems in your home or your marriage or in your business. And there's a difficult season that is going on. But you need to understand that this season, as difficult as it is, is an opportunity to encounter the presence of God. Because when something is happening to me, God wants to reveal himself to me. And you need to understand that in the middle of difficulties, the posture that God takes towards you. David puts it this way in Psalms 34, 18. Look at this. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So what David says is that when we're going through difficulty, when we're walking through things that we don't know how to even comprehend, and we're going through moments that we never imagined we would go through, he says it's in that moment that God is close. 
He's close to you, meaning that an encounter with God in your most difficult seasons is what God wants you to have with them. The Lord is close to those whose hearts are broken and saves those who are crushed, who are pushed down in their spirit. You see, the bad news today is this, is that bad days are coming. Welcome to church this morning. Like, I wish I could tell you something different. I wish I could be like, hey, it's all going to be roses and flowers and rainbows and everything is going to be perfect. But bad days are coming. The Bible says that in heaven, there'll be no more pain. There'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more tears. That in heaven, everything will be made right. But God never promised that here in this world that everything would be roses. And maybe some of you were sold that bill when you came into the church and they're like, hey, if you give your heart to Jesus, everything's going to be perfect. And then all of a sudden you realize everything is not perfect. But God's plan was never for everything to be perfect in this world. He never promised us a pain-free, problem-filled life. He says, you know, in this world, you're going to have hardships. In this world, you're going to have some trouble. He says, but take heart for I have overcome the world. His plan was not to rescue you from the pain, but to sustain you in the midst of the pain. That was God's plan all along, that God wants to help you stand in the middle of your darkest days. And the day that you get the worst news of your life, God wants you to have an encounter with him. He wants to help you to stand. In the moment of your greatest tragedy, God wants to be present. He wants you to have an encounter with him. The day that you lost someone that you deeply loved, God wants to be present with you. He wants to have an encounter with you. The day when you are grieving, God wants to help you stand in the middle of that. The day when you wake up and you look at your life and you're like, do I have any purpose? Do I have any worth? Does anybody love me? And you're going through that moment. God wants to help you stand. He wants to help you walk through the valleys that you're going through in your life. That's what God promises us. And so God tells us, and then we see in this encounter with Isaiah, that in those moments that we're going through difficulties, They are the prime opportunity to encounter God in a way that we've never encountered him before because he's close to the broken hearted. You see, pain can be a platform for God to do something great in your life. That God uses pain as a platform to set you up for maybe one of the greatest moments of your life because in that moment, you can experience the real tangible presence of God. Our greatest pain can be a catalyst for our greatest gain. The second thing we see in this story is Isaiah goes on in Isaiah verse six, verse five. He says, woe to me, I cried. I'm ruined for I'm a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then all of a sudden, Isaiah encounters the presence of God and his response is this, I'm messed up. My life is jacked up. There is something that is wrong with me and we need to understand that when we have an encounter with God, when we see God clearly, we see ourselves clearly. When we see God clearly, we see ourselves clearly. And this is what happens in the life of Isaiah. He's like, man, there's pain, there's difficulty. I have this encounter with God. He sees the glory of God, the train of his robe filling the temple. He says the whole earth is full of his glory. Like I begin to see God clearly. And then in that moment, Isaiah is like, ooh, now I look at my life and it doesn't measure up. Like there's something wrong on the inside of me. And you need to understand, you can't have an encounter with God if you're not going to allow him to show you who you really are. You will not have an encounter with God if you continue to try to live with the facade and you don't just get real with God. What God responds to is the people who say, God, this is who I am. Now, God, can you do a work in me? This is what's going on in my life. This is the brokenness of my life. And this is what Isaiah comes to. Isaiah saw his own condition. He saw his own faults and failures. He saw his own brokenness. He saw his own sin. And he's like, I am jacked up. Like I am not good enough to be in the presence of a holy God. But when you have an encounter with God, God says, when you begin to understand and see who I am, then you're going to see yourselves clearly. Because what God wants to do is God wants to begin to touch the deepest parts of your soul. God wants to begin to do a work on the inside of you. And here's the problem with this. This is where we get a little uncomfortable in church, isn't it? When God wants to begin to like touch the deepest parts of us, 
This is where like in a service, we're like, ooh, I don't, I don't know about this. Like his presence is here. I, I see the majesty, the greatness of my God. And now he's kind of messing with some stuff in my life that I'm like, ooh, I didn't want that really exposed. We get really uncomfortable, don't we? Because we don't really like people messing with the deep parts of our soul, do we? I mean, let's just be honest. Like we go around church on Sunday mornings and we're not very transparent with people. Like somebody would be like, hey, how you doing? You're like, I'm doing great. I mean, God's awesome, man. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And like on the inside of you, you're broken. You're hurting. There's pain. There's difficulty that you're going through. For some of you, you walk in here on a Sunday and on, on Friday or Saturday, you got some of the worst news of your life, but you don't really want that to be exposed to anybody. And so you're like, I'm doing great. I'm good. But more so than that, you don't even want to expose it to God, and he already knows what's going on in your life. And so we too often are trying to hide our pain from God. But if you want an encounter with God, you're going to have to get a revelation of how mighty and powerful and glorious God is. And you're going to be like, man, this guy, he's on the throne. He is powerful. He's glorious. That's what Isaiah did. But in that moment, you know what that did for Isaiah? It messed him up. He's like, I am messed up. And he recognized that because as he saw God clearly, he saw his own brokenness. And if we want an encounter with God, we're going to have to see God clearly and then have the courage to take a step towards God and go, okay, God, I'm willing to allow you to get into the corners of my life that I don't want anybody else to even be involved in. See, some of you, you walk into this place today and maybe you haven't verbalized it, but you would begin to think to yourself, I'm stuck in my spiritual journey. Like some of you, that's how you feel today. You're like, I'm just stuck. Like, like I love God, but I just don't feel like my relationship with God is progressing anymore. And you want to know why that is? I'm just going to tell you why, whether you like it or not. Because I get to talk and you have to sit there and listen, right? <laughs> Captive audience. Here's the reason you're stuck in your spiritual journey. You're not allowing God to touch the deepest parts of your life. Your relationship with God is surface level. And guess what? You can be saved at surface level. You can, hey, God, forgive me of my sins. And God says, hey, I'll forgive you of your sins. But then some of you, that's the, the extent that you've gone in your relationship with God. And God's saying, man, if you would see the majesty and the power of the God that you serve, I can help do something in those deep parts of your life that need to be transformed, that need to be renewed, that need to be changed. Because an encounter with God will make you realize that God is bigger than the darkest parts of your life. And there's nothing that's out of reach of God because God sees everything. So when we see God clearly, we see ourselves clearly. The third thing I want you to understand is this. When we see ourselves clearly, we see our future clearly. When we see God, then we begin to see ourselves. And then when we see ourselves clearly, then we get a better picture of the future that God has for us. Look at what happened to Isaiah, Isaiah 6. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal. So he takes this coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. He goes on, verse 7. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Like the, the angel comes and says, okay, I'm taking away your sin. You've opened up the darkest parts of your life. You've seen your life clearly. Now I'm going to take your sin away. And here's the problem though. I think some of us have a very incorrect view of who God is. And some of that is because of what you've experienced in church. For many of you, maybe you went to church and maybe the very first time you came into church or growing up in church, what you were told is all the things that were wrong with you. You're like, well, you've got this sin in your life and that sin. And, and, and the church began to get really good at pointing out all the sins that people have. And we need to deal with sin. But believe me, we need to deal with the shortcomings, the things that are wrong in our life. But we can't just deal with the sin without teaching why we need to reckon with our past. And so there has to be more purpose to it than just calling out people's sin and going, hey, you did this wrong and you did that wrong. Because we're all sinners that we need the grace of our Lord and Savior. And so in this story, in this encounter with God, God looks at Isaiah and he says, you know what? I'm taking away your sin and guilt. I'm taking away all of these things. But the reason that God wants to do that is God wants to settle your past so that you can get on with your future. Like he has a plan for your life. And you may get tired of me uh, telling you this over and over and over again, but I'm going to keep telling you until you really understand it. God has a purpose for your life. 
God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your future. He has the plans and the steps ordained for your life. And God wants you to get on that journey as quickly as you can. And so he wants you to deal with all the junk in your past so that you can move on to the future that he has for you. And that's the picture of what we have to be as the body of Christ. Yes, we have sin. And Isaiah recognizes his, all of his faults and his failures. And God says, I'm taking your sins away for you. And the reason he wanted to do this for Isaiah, look what happens next, verse 8. He says, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And he said, here I am, send me. God, deal with my sins so I can get on with the purpose that you have for me. You see, when we begin to see ourselves clearly, then we see our future clearly. Isaiah in this moment realized the process that he went through. Is he in all of this encounter with God? First he goes, man, my God is big and powerful. He's like, man, look at him. His train fills the temple. And in that moment, he began to realize how small he was, that he was unclean and and that there was brokenness in his life. But then God quickly goes, let me take away that shame. Let me take away that guilt. And then he says, now I've got a purpose for your life. And that's the same process that God wants you to go through. God, you are great and big and powerful. Whoa, I'm so small and there's mess and junk in my life. And God would say, I don't want you to stay there forever just refocusing on the mess and the junk because I'm gonna take it away. I'm gonna burn it away and then I'm going to tell, call you to some great mission because I have a purpose for your life. You want an encounter with God? Then you need to understand that in the midst of your pain, don't run from God, run to him. Like those are the best opportunities to experience the presence of God. When you get there, you need to know that God wants to touch the deepest parts of your life. When you begin to have an encounter with God, you need to understand in that moment, God wants to touch some things in you. He wants to touch the things that you've held away from God for so long. And then when you get to that place and you settle yesterday, then he wants to call you into the purpose that he has for you. He has a plan for your life. And so as we wrap up today, Isaiah had this encounter with God. And in the midst of it, he said that it all started with the pain and the difficulty that I faced in that moment. And what I understand about people that have walked into this room today, and what I hear over and over and over again is I hear about the hardships and the pain that individuals are going through. I hear about loss and grieving moments and and struggles that they're going through. And honestly, we could all use a better response to pain. If pain and difficulty is given, then how can we respond better in those moments so that we experience the presence of God and he moves us to a place of healing? And so as we close, very practically, I just want to give you, how do we overcome a bad day? How do we overcome those moments that we didn't see coming, but we end up having to face them in the first place? Let me give you three responses to pain, three action steps that you can live out in your life to pain. The first is this. We need to understand, actually, that my pain, go back one slide, Lloyd, that my pain is either a jail that imprisons me or it's a school that empowers me. You're going to have to make a choice that your pain will either imprison you or it will empower you to the things that God has for you. So what is the three responses? The first is to stop running from God and run to God. Stop running from God and run to God. Everything in your mind in the moment that you experience difficulty and pain is gonna wanna sometimes try to push you away from God, to begin to blame God for everything that has gone on. But God in those moments are extremely close to you. And God would say, in those moments of your pain and difficulty, do not run from me. It's in those moments that we need to live out Isaiah 55 verse six that says this, seek the Lord while he may be found. When can he be found? When he is close to us, when we encounter his presence, call on him when he is near. And in the moment of your brokenness, in the moments of your difficulty, we see at scripture, God says, that is the moment that I am the closest to you because I come close to those that are brokenhearted. And so it's in that moment that we have to call on the name of the Lord. And let me just speak directly to someone who's walked into this place today. Maybe you've walked in here and the truth is, is your life has been filled with all kinds of pain all kinds of difficulty, all kinds of hardship. And honestly, if you're being honest with yourself, you've been running from God and blaming God for what happened. Even though you're like, man, I I know he's good. You've been blaming God. You've been holding whatever pain you've been going through against God. 
And you can keep doing that if you want. And you can keep running if you so choose. But life will not get better if you keep running from God. And some of you think you're punishing God by saying, okay, God, I'm mad at you. I'm punishing you in this moment. But honestly, all you're doing is punishing yourself. But the pain and the difficulty you're going through, God says, I am close to you in those moments, but we've got to stop blaming God for that. Some of you aren't necessarily running from God. You just aren't running to God. Like you go through difficult situations and circumstances or you're going through life and your first move isn't to even get to God. You're just kind of going, I'm just kind of going through life. And maybe you've said yes to Jesus, but you not have just moving every day in his direction. You see Jeremiah 29, 13 says this, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your hearts, with all of your hearts. So what do you need to do? You need to go all in. That in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your difficulty, you need to understand not to run from God, but run to God. The second thing is this, is you need to take some steps to grow. You need to take some steps to grow. One of the reasons bad days beat you up so much, the reason that difficult times overwhelm you so much is because you need some more depth to your life. You need some more depth. You need depth. And so you need to take some steps to grow. See, too many of us are like, I grabbed my kid's floaty this week. Too many of us are like a floaty in the ocean. You ever been out in the ocean with like a, like a raft or something like that? And too many of us in the body of Christ, we, we look like this, man. We're putting on like the kid's floats. And we're just kind of going through life and, and the ocean hits us. This is how we look. I mean, it looks pretty ridiculous, doesn't it? But we're going through life and you get into the ocean and you said yes to Jesus. And he's thrown the life raft out to you and you're saved. But the ocean is moving you in whatever direction it so desires. The waves come and you're over here and the waves come and you're over here. And guess what? You're not gonna drown. You won't drown in that moment because why? You've got the floats, but there's just no stability to your life. There's no stability. And so every hardship that comes becomes like a wave that's just taking you in another direction and you're going all over the place. And I'm glad you have the floaty on. I'm glad that there's a relationship that's been established with God. But guess what? There's more that he has for you. Like he wants you to take steps to grow. Look at what he says in this passage of scripture. He says this and... um, that, that, that not only being a floaty though in the water, what, what we gotta get to is the place where we're gonna be a ship. Cause you know what happens with the ship? The ship doesn't move, does it? The ship gets the waves and the waves hit the ship, but the ship stays on course. What's the difference between a floaty and a ship? It's weight, it's stability, it's security. And that's what God wants us to be. He says, I want you to move from just being a floaty in the ocean to being a ship that that can take on the waves because God wants to reveal more of himself to you personally. Like this is the encounter that God has for us. It's a personal relationship where he is revealing more of himself, more of his plans, more of his purpose for your life. God has a plan. And he wants us to not just be a floaty in the ocean. He wants us to be a ship that has some stability to us. Look at what first Peter says. Look what Peter says here. He says, like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation, a full experience of salvation. So what does that mean? It means that you can say yes to Jesus, but not experience all that God has for you. You can say yes to Jesus and you can put the floaty on, But there's more of an experience of salvation that God has for you. And he wants to develop something in you. And too many of us have said yes to Jesus and we're wearing our floaty. And the waves are tossing us back and forth and difficulty is coming. And there's heartache and there's pain. And we're getting tossed back and forth by the waves. But he says, you can have a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. Cry out for it. Seek it. Go after it. You want to survive a bad day? You want to survive the difficult seasons that life is going to throw your way? You need to take steps to grow. There is more for your life. That's why around here, you hear us talk about it. We say, what is your next step? It's why there's a booth in the back of the sanctuary because we want people to always be taking steps. There is a step for your life. I don't care where you're at or how long you've been a follower of Jesus Christ. There is a step. We are perpetually taking steps 
Personally, I believe if you're not moving somewhere, you're either going forward or you're going backwards. Like, I just don't believe there's just a standing still moment. And we need to always be going, God, what is next? God, what more do you have for me? God, what more do you want me to experience in my life? For some of you, you need to take a step of baptism. Like, I don't know why you haven't done it yet. Or maybe you did it when you were really young, and it didn't mean absolutely anything to you. Your parents told you to get baptized. You're like, I'm getting baptized. And you're like, I don't even remember that experience. You need, to, you need to get baptisms. For some of you, you need to get in a group because the Bible says that iron sharpens iron and you need some relationships around you. And you know what you need to do? You just need to take a step. Some of you need to learn to trust God with, with your finances and tithing and go, God, I'm just taking a step in this arena because God, as I've learned to trust you in this, guess what? I'm not gonna be shifted. If I learn to trust God with my finances, I'm not gonna be thrown off course every time there's a little bit of something that comes uncertain in my life. God, I trust in you. God, I know who you are. I'm going to be like a ship. And even though the waves hit me and, and there's trouble that comes against my finances or the finances of my business, God, I will not be shaken because God, I know who you are. Because God, I'm trusting you in these moments. Some of you need to set a time aside with God and just take a step and go, God, I'm carving out time every day of my life just to spend with you, to, to grow in my relationship with you. And guess what? Take a step and then take another step and another step. And before long, the waves and the difficulties that life throws your way will not shake you. You'll be going, you know what? That's hardship that I'm going through. That's a valley moment that I'm going through. But I know that God is close to me. I know that God is close to the brokenhearted. And I'm not going to be thrown off course by what I'm experiencing in this moment. We have to take some steps to grow. You see, our greatest pain can be the catalyst for your greatest gain. That in those moments that you're hurting the most, God says, I can show up the most. And I can be the foundation of your life. The third thing is this, final thing. Allow God to use what you've been through to help others. Allow God to use what you've been through to help others. That the pain and the difficulties that you've experienced in your life, God wants to use those to help others. The thing that you think disqualifies you is actually the thing that qualifies you. And some of you have gone through some painful experiences and maybe you've thought to yourself, man, that just disqualifies me for ever using that. Nuh uh that pain, that difficulty, that's the thing that qualifies you. You're like, Aaron, I've been divorced three times. It qualifies you to walk with somebody else who's gone through divorce or who's gone through difficulty. Aaron, I was a drug addict or I was addicted to something in my life and, and I feel like that disqualifies me. No, 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 no. That's the very thing that qualifies you that when God gets a hold of your life and he changes you, now you can help walk with somebody else who's gone through that season and you can begin to testify of the greatness and the power of God. I actually had a conversation with, a, with an individual this last week and, and I got talking to them and I said, hey, can you just share your story with me? Like, what, what, what's your story? I didn't know him first time I met him. And he just began to tell me, he goes, man, I, I, was, I was addicted. And three years ago, I had tried everything in my life and finally I tried Jesus. And he says, in that moment, God broke the addiction and he took it away. I've not had one more desire for those addictions in my life. God healed my marriage. He restored my marriage that was on the path to being broken. And I just looked at him and I said, man, that's your story. You keep sharing it everywhere you go because God wants to use that story to set somebody else free. You see, you gotta allow God to use what you've been through to help other people. You see, God uses people and he uses the circumstances that you're going through. Peoples that God used throughout the Bible were broken people. He used stutterers, murderers, adulterers, cheaters, liars, and thieves. Why did God choose those people? Why did God choose individuals that weren't perfect? Because God wanted to use them so that he could relate to the broken world in which we live in. Your story matters, your life matters. God has a purpose and the pain and the difficulty that you're going through, God wants to use it to help other people. Look at what 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 says, and we're about ready to close. It says, all praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. God is the source of your comfort. But then look at what he does. Look at how he wants to use your story. He comforts us in all of our troubles. He's present. There's an encounter you can have with God in the middle of your difficulties so that we can comfort others. God comforts us. Why? So that we can comfort others. And when they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. He comforts us so that we can comfort others with the same comfort that we've experienced from God. What does that make? What does that tell us? Is there's purpose in your pain. 
that when God comforts us, we can comfort others with the same comfort we've experienced from God. You need to understand, somebody needs to understand this in this place today, the difficulty that you've gone through, the pain that you've experienced in life is not something you need to try to hide or to push off. God has purpose in the middle of your pain. And you would maybe never ask that for anybody else in their life, but God wants to use that story to do something great for the kingdom of God. Would you go ahead and stand to your feet? So how are bad days turned around? How are difficult seasons overcome? We run to God and not from God. We take steps to grow. We go, God, I'm gonna do something because God, there's another step that you have for me. And then we understand that the pain that we go through, there's purpose in it. And we're gonna allow God to use what we've been through to help others that are around us. We pray today. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for your presence in this place. God, your Holy Spirit is close. And so God, as we've entered into this place, God, there are people that are experiencing pain today. God, there are people, Lord, that are experiencing pain in their marriage. God, pain in their financial situation. God, there's people that are experiencing emotional, emotional and mental pain. God, there's people that are overwhelmed by life. God, there's people that have lost individuals and they're grieving in their hearts and their spirits. God, there's people that are walking through valley moments right now. God, it's a difficult season. But God, I pray that even in this moment right now as they've walked into this place, that they would encounter the presence of the living God because God, you said in your word that you are close to the broken hearted those whose spirits are crushed, God, God, you are there and that God, an encounter with you is possible. And God, when we're trying to make sense of everything and make sense of the brokenness and the difficulties that we're going through, God, God, the loss that we've experienced, God, God, an encounter with you changes everything. So God, right now, by the power of your Holy Spirit, God, I ask that you begin to move throughout this place. God, I pray that you would reach into the deepest parts of our soul, God, and you begin to bring healing, God, and strength. God, I pray, Lord, that you would bring comfort, Lord, and grace and warmth, God, to people's hearts and their spirits today in only a way that you can.